Well, y'all know one thing for certain and two things for sure. I can call this government out on their bullshit. Now, this administration have been sharing cash grants to their friends and family and loyal supporters for the last year and a half, maybe two years. Since they tap into that oil money, they have been, oh, they have been spending it on themselves, on their friends, their family, the side chicks, the side chicks family. They have been spending the, the, the oil money, just not on the citizens of Guyana and the people in the country that are desperately in need of it. They haven't been spending it on them. Information out about the legality of the process. So first of all, he dealt, I saw in the comments that he made, he dealt with the powers vested in the president. And there is a view that, oh, that because Hickens has an extension now, he might not be eligible to be confirmed. So that issue needs to be dealt with by the Attorney General. He was lawfully extended and therefore he is eligible to be confirmed. No new information, that's why we're here. We want this pub the public to know that even if you're hearing something or you see something, we just want Joshua to return. Even if they did something to him, we, the family, we need him. It's been two weeks since his abduction and his family is not at ease, he's not at risk. We need justice, even if something has happened to him. We need persons to start speaking out. Joshua was so loving. Right now, his mom, all other relatives, we're tormented by daily whatever's going on and we're not pleased. We need Joshua at any cost, even if, you know, we're not pleased. And airing nothing, that's what... Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Amid the crushing load of poverty coupled with high cost of living, President Irfan Ali on Thursday announced a one-off cash grant of $200,000 for every household in Guyana during his address at the 12th Parliament Special Sitting of the National Assembly. This initiative, which will inject $60 billion into the economy, is expected to commence immediately as authorities establish a fair and transparent distribution process, Ali said to thunderous applause from government members of Parliament. Outside of the House, members of the opposition who boycotted the sitting staged a protest highlighting the cost of living crisis here as well as accusations of corruption against the administration. President Ali emphasized the commitment of the government to prioritize the welfare of all Guyanese, noting that since taking office, the administration has implemented various measures to enhance disposable income, including the removal of over 200 taxes and fees imposed by the previous government, such as VAT on water, electricity, and basic food items well y'all know one thing for certain and two things for sure i can call this government out on their bullshit now this administration have been sharing cash grants to their friends and family and loyal supporters for the last year and a half maybe two years since they tap into that oil money they have been oh they have been spending it on themselves, on their friends, their family, the side chicks, the side chicks family. They have been spending the, the, the oil money, just not on the citizens of Guyana and the people in the country that are desperately in need of it. They haven't been spending it on them. They have been sharing cash grants for the last year and a half, if not two years, right? But they have only been sharing these cash grants to their friends and family, right? The sweet woman, the side chicks and the family, the whole family getting cash grant, the whole house. If it's 10 of them, 20 of them alone from 20 family members getting cash grants. Nobody else ain't getting a chance to get cash grants. The REOs and of these and these councils from these villages would go around, hush, hush, collect names and write it down. Write down all the family name and them kind of thing. At one point in time, people were flying in from America for go home for collect 350 as a cash grant. The whole family fly home for collect cash grant and that kind of thing. That is how bad it was. This is how terrible this government, terrible. This government has been doing a piss poor jobs, a piss poor job at managing the oil money, at spending the oil money. 
So now they've been giving cash grants for over a year and a half. Oh, Irfan. We know y'all been sharing cash grant. Y'all wrapping up the money. And are you carrying it in Freedom House? And calling y'all supporters and calling y'all friends and family easy. And y'all been giving them money for for months, for the last year and a half. Y'all went to SU Cable. Y'all shared to y'all friends and family. Mind you, I don't mind this government giving cash grant because it's we all money. We money, we deserve it. But if you were going to share cash grants, then you should have been giving every household since last year, since y'all started sharing cash grants two years ago. Y'all should have been giving every household. Not now. When y'all supporters and y'all people start coming to social media and calling y'all out and complaining about y'all only giving relief and money to y'all friends and family. Now you come this morning with your tricks for $200,000 to each household. What is $200,000? When you and your government and your ministers literally for the last year and a half gave away millions if not billions of dollars in cash grants and grants fishermen grants business grants wherever y'all wanted to call it wherever y'all wanted to, to disguise giving y'all supporters money as y'all been doing it for the last year and a half now because y'all get called out y'all come forgive each household two hundred thousand dollars anyways here i'm gonna say to y'all take the two hundred thousand dollars because it they can come, they get some of them don't come under this post and I'm like, oh, it's still better than nothing. Yes, they can get out $200,000 now because all the millions and the billions, they don't give the supporters, don't fold the pocket. All them are your family, the friends, them in charge of the NDC. All them don't collect millions of dollars in cash grants and stuff it in the pocket and they get money. And then, look now, this and them who don't collect money, they still come for collect this $200,000. No, no, this $200,000 is missing them. The comment to collect it to these cash grants that these people were giving out for the last year and a half they weren't giving it to the people that actually need it they weren't giving it to the small businesses that actually needed these cash grants they weren't giving it to the poor they weren't giving it to people who can't afford to send the children to school they weren't giving it to people that children going to bed hungry when the night got no they were sharing these cash grants and giving it to their friends and family and the rich cars some of them went and collect, went collecting these cash grants for the last year and a half don't need the money you know greed it was greed some of them didn't need to collect the government cash grant that they've been collecting no but you see greed they didn't care they still went out there and they were still collecting cash grant knowing fully well that they don't need it and there were people in those villages there were people in that country that deserve and needed that cash grant more than 90 percent of them that, that was collecting cash grant for the last two years so Efron. I'm a guy. You can trick, you can trick, you can trick Guyanese all the time. You can't trick me all the time. We know what y'all been doing. And we know that this 200 here is just a distraction for quiet the noise, for quiet we don't. Because we've been on social media complaining about y'all giving out cash grant to y'all friend and family. We've been complaining about all the oil money y'all taking out of the reserve. What y'all doing with it? Y'all ain't showing you what we do. What y'all doing with it? Y'all putting all in infrastructure because that's how y'all just thief y'all money. We been no the pop being stupid. We know y'all done with here now. We ain't stupid. This is why we can take the two hundred thousand dollar cards. None of y'all best don't say no to two hundred thousand. Y'all go and collect it. Next, the coming for give y'all this land. I can tell y'all all the tricks will come in next. Next is land. All y'all with one land. Wait election time next year, like January, February, March time. Then start sharing out beer land. Then start giving y'all land. I y'all would wait in twenty and forty years. Then gonna start giving out land because what? Desperate times calls for desperate measure and they desperately want to stay in office because they desperately want to continue thiefing taxpayers money so they want to come out today so if they have to buy this election they can buy it but here i can tell you for the smart ones collect everything they're giving y'all tell them yes just to go just to go they could trick y'all y'all could trick them too tell them yes y'all voting for them Yes, we can vote for you, Mr. President. Give me two more land, I'm going to vote for you. Give me a house, I'm going to vote for you. Give me duty free, I'm going to vote for you. Whatever y'all call for what y'all want, now is the time. Tell them y'all going to vote for them. 
because it's a recurring cycle. When you are done for them, they're going to go back in there. Same thing again. Friends and family, till the last year, till the election year, then they're going to come for, for gay art things and pretend as though they care about poor people and they care about how you have been surviving for the last three and four years. They only care this year about how you, they only care about how you are surviving this year because it's election year. So now you can get things and now they can pretend as though they care about you. Y'all have been punishing for the last three years. Any one of them come and visit y'all and ask y'all how y'all living or if y'all want to cash grant? No. But they're coming now because it's voting time and they need y'all votes. And they know that people are upset with them. Their own supporters are upset with them because they've been dogging out their own supporters. So it's not just we, not just, not just we who in the won't support them, not just African people, not just the people them didn't care but nobody. The only people the government care about for the last three or four years is the friends and family and filling the own pockets everything is a Ponzi scheme everything is a money laundering scheme everything that this government every program everything is a scam is a is a is a is a corruption listen we in a start please now you come for tell me you're giving me two hundred thousand out of your household hey fran are you too wicked? You are wicked to poor people. You are wicked to the citizens. 30 Guyanese have received cash grants from the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport to boost their creative ideas and work. The grant falls under the Ministry's Cultural and Creative Industries Grant Program. Each of the 30 persons will receive almost $1 million to assist with their work and develop their ideas. Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr. said the program was designed to reach every region. Over 200 persons applied for the initiative which received an allocation of $30 million in this year's budget. A condition of our cultural and creative industries grant was that every single region at least one grant was earmarked for that region. Even though we didn't have as many in aggregate from that region you will find people here from region 9, region 7, region 8, region 6, all over it you will find people being represented from across Guyana. Which shows that it is just not diversity in appearance and diversity in the projects but also diversity in the location. All which combines into the creation of this invisible fabric called our culture uniting our people called Guyanese. The culture minister said, Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Charles Ramson Jr. at the prize-giving ceremony held at the National Cultural Center. The Ministry of Culture has also announced the creation of a cultural and creative industry ambassador program. Those receiving the grants will also have to commit to serving as cultural ambassadors for the Ministry of Culture. Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports, Charles Ramson Jr handing over the grant alongside representatives from the ministry. The Ministry of Culture sees the investment as a significant step towards recognizing the cultural and artistic talent of Guyanese. Ramson said the program will enable artists to create, develop and showcase their work. Economy, fastest growing economy in the world is giving its citizens about 960 something us dollars 960 something us dollars at one time according to irfan ali in other words what he's saying i not come back here for more i not get more forget me not give you nothing more y'all don't deserve anything else that is what they're doing and they expect they expect people to buy in to this foolish propaganda. Now let's move on for a second. Now all of a sudden, they love this idea of a cash grant. They shut down the idea. They said it was ridiculous. Because after all, if you're getting billions of dollars of oil revenue, guess what? Yeah, thank you so much, Jamal Aziz and the pink slip. Hundreds of persons didn't get the pink slip. They got the pink slip, but it never got the money. So since those who are waiting for the pink slip, pink slip to get their monies, guess what's going to happen with this $200,000 for every house, household, right? It's corruption again because they can bypass certain people's house. They might bypass Jamil Aziz's house. They might bypass certain people's house. Houses, all these things they are going to do is a recipe for corruption, it's disaster, and y'all watch what's going to happen. They're gonna get police officers escorting people with loads of cash. 
And those people escorting them with the cash and all these things, guess what? They're going to thief the money. It's corruption upon corruption. That is what's going on. They are a pack of thieves in government. Thieves upon thieves. But wait a minute. Wasn't it the same vagabonds, these vagabonds, these election riggers in their message? Just about a week ago, I think last week, veteran trade unionists spoke about the importance of the oil revenue and the cash towards household members of uh, throughout the country. Citizens should get it. And lo and behold, the PVP, no vision, no nothing, decided that that's what they are going to do. And so Nigel Hughes and the AFC jumped out, jumped on their veranda and started to take all the praise. Oh, it was the AFC. The AFC made it happen. Wrong bang, Nigel. You don't play the politics like that. Wrong bang. The AFC is not the reason for this to happen today. Stop taking credit for things that the AFC couldn't get done. Stop it, Nigel. It's not the right politics. Do not do it. Do not do it. And so you guys have lost a lot of points today for stealing people's thunder. The AFC has to come up with its own thunder. Oh, man. The ink ain't even dry yet and the AFC done issue a statement taking praise for something that they have absolutely nothing to do with nothing 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 they may have echoed it belatedly but oh man when you're gonna take credit for something that don't belong to y'all makes me wonder whether better will come <laughs> sorry i had to give that mischievous laugh but um nigel they shouldn't have done that give credit where credit is due dr clive thomas is the main guy in all of this and tonight, we take this time out to salute Dr. Clive Thomas and say thank you. But we need more than two. The people need more than 200,000. It's just crumbs. Just crumbs. That is what it is. All right. What else it is that we can talk about? Exxon Mobil Guyana may not be telling the truth about Guyana's oil reserves. This conclusion was made by Vice President Barrett Jadio on Thursday during a media conference. The Vice President in an invited comment to Kai Tour News explained that government used the quarterly report submitted by the operator of the Stabroke block to arrive at the recently announced update to the reserves. In August this year, Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Barrett revealed that the reserves grew from 11 billion barrels to 11.6 billion barrels. The announcement came some two years and four months after the last update in April 2022, following eight additional discoveries. On Wednesday, however, President of Exxon Mobil Guyana Limited, Alistair Raubelj told reporters that the Stabroke block reserves are currently less than 11 B barrels. In addressing the issue, the vice president made it clear that government's figures should not vary from Exxon's. Although Exxon told reporters that government conducted its own analysis to arrive at the figure, Jagdeo made it clear that the state has no such ongoing arrangement. To this end, he said, so it's either one of two things. It's either Exxon is not being truthful or the ministry gave me the wrong figure, but that is where the figure is sourced from, the submission by Exxon, and so there shouldn't be a difference. Jagdeo said it was totally false that government was conducting its own assessments. The VP explained, I asked the technical staff where the reserves number is coming from and they told me we are getting the reserve numbers from this quarterly report. I don't know of anybody that we have hired to check reserves so it can be that we are doing our own assessment of reserves. Right now, the reserve figures come from Exxon. He was keen to note that the ministry is now in the process of recruiting consultants to conduct an analysis of the country's reserves. To this end, Jagdeo noted that when this process commences, it is likely to produce figures varying those presented by Exxon. If we hire a consultant then they would say oh this rock formation here, we believe it has a barrel of oil dot 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 and Exxon say no. I believe it's half a barrel per every square foot then you can have varying things there but right now, we shouldn't have any variance. Because the ministry's numbers are derived from the reports, he pointed out. Meanwhile, Minister Barrett at the sidelines of Thursday's sitting of the National Assembly also 
addressed the issue in an exclusive interview with this publication. He told Kai Tour News that there is a general misconception that every oil discovery should be added to the reserve. He, however, noted that when a discovery is made, an estimate of the resources may be given. However, further appraisal activities will be required to confirm the reserves. To this end, Barrett said, when the appraisal work is done, sometimes that number decreases and, in some cases, it increases so that is why you would find that it fluctuate a little. Barrett made it clear that the government announced the update to the reserve after analyzing the data presented by Exxon. When asked what reserve figure the Guyanese population should accept, the minister said the ministry will have to reassess the numbers. In a statement last evening, the ministry explained that Exxon in its third quarter submission to the government presented a new reserve figure amounting to less than 11 B barrels. To this end, the ministry noted that it is currently reviewing the data and will release an updated assessment of the reservoir volumes following completion of the verification process. Leader of the Opposition and the People's National Congress Reform, Aubrey Norton is confident in his party's ability to engage the operator of the Stabroke Block, Exxon Mobil Guyana Limited, upon taking office in 2025 to effect changes to the 2016 production sharing agreement. On Friday during his weekly press conference, the leader was asked to comment on the recent statements made by EMGL's president and country manager Alastair Routledge who said on Wednesday that the company has no interest in invoking the provision in the PSA which allows for renegotiation. Norton however sought to read out the provision in the contract to make the point that irrespective of what Exxon says, changes can be made to the agreement. Article 31.2 of the Exxon contract states, This agreement shall not be amended or modified in any respect except by written agreement entered into by all the parties which shall state the date upon which the amendment or modification shall become effective. To this end, Norton reasoned, Clearly this article opens the door for us to engage the contractor. When we arrive at that stage where we engage the contractor, we have people that are skilled in negotiations. He also pointed to the importance in timing, stressing that advantage must be taken at a time when talks are more likely to bear fruit. Furthermore, Norton said, We believe at the time, regardless of what is said now, there will be scope to engage the contractor and make changes. There is evidence that changes were made already so there is precedence. I accept that Mr. Ravulch has to take a position in keeping with his company's mandate. Our task is to represent the people of Diana. We will do that and when we come to that bridge, we will cross it and we believe we will cross successfully, the leader added. President Arfan Ali's desire to appoint Clifton Haken as Commissioner of Police has hit a snag with his government now faced with legal questions as to whether this can be done. Given that the acting police chief has already passed the age of retirement, Haken's tenure as the acting head of the force was extended by President Ali although he has crossed the age limit of 55. Vice President Barad Jagdio was asked whether President Ali can go beyond this by now appointing him substantively and he said that the Attorney General, Anil Nan Law, has been instructed to check out the legal ramifications. Speaking at his Freedom House press conference, Jagdio said, I have listened to the Attorney General and I spoke with him in Parliament and I told him that he needs to get more information out about the legality of the process. So first of all, I saw in the comments he made, he dealt with the powers vested in the President. And there is a view that because Haken has an extension now, he might not be eligible to be confirmed. So that issue needs to be dealt with by the Attorney General, Jagdil said. Jagdil said the compliance referred to is the consultation with the leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, whereby he does not have to agree with the president, but in keeping with the constitution, consultations must be held between the two, which was done in the form of letters. Questioning the reason for the big noise and person saying that to appoint Hicken is unlawful, while he of himself is of the opinion that it is not. He has asked the act to get the necessary information to ensure that the appointment will not be unlawful because people may be questioning the lawfulness of it, not whether the president has the power to appoint but whether we have complied with the process. He assured me that we have complied with the process to get the extension done and also the process to have the confirmation also done. Meanwhile, in a letter to the editor, retired assistant police commission, Clinton Conway said to appoint Hicken as the police commission after he would have passed the age of retirement would be unconstitutional. Conway noted that the appointment of a commissioner of police and deputy commissioner of police is enshrined in the constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Diana. Article 211 one of the Constitution states, The Commissioner of Police and every Deputy Commissioner of Police shall be appointed by the President acting after meaningful consultation with the Leader of the Opposition and Chairperson of the Police Service Commission after the Chairperson has consulted with other members of the Commission. Beat the system, right? So we have to watch out for everyone, whether they're PVP or APNU or AFC.
And my last question, what is your position on the move to confirm Clifton Hicken as substantive top cop? Um, so I, I think um, I've listened to the, to the attorney general and I spoke with him in parliament and I told him that the, he needs to work uh, or get more information about out uh, to get more information out about the legality of the process so first of all he dealt i saw in the comments that he made he dealt with the powers vested in the president and there is a view that oh that because Hickens has an extension now, he might not be eligible to be confirmed. So that issue needs to be dealt with by the Attorney General. He was lawfully extended, and therefore he is eligible to be confirmed, and the President has the power to confirm him, and the process to confirm him has been complied with. That is consultation with the leader of the opposition what he doesn't the leader of the opposition does not have to agree to the appointment he just has to be consulted on the appointment i recall when granger invited me as leader of the opposition to deal with the commissioner of police and also four deputies at that time um ram narayan was the acting commissioner he didn't even include him in the four deputies or conform him as as commissioner of police but he had the right as president he consulted with me i expressed my view um i said that this the only one indo guyanese you have here among the group and you're not you're not going to give him uh, you know you're not confirming him or giving him a top post and he ignored that and he went ahead and appointed and it was lawfully done he appointed five persons so why are they making this big noise now we're confirming hickens you uh, know it's 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 um that it's unlawful i i don't think it's not unlawful. That's all I have to say. Every all day, and and I asked the attorney general to today. I said to him, "You have to get more information because people may be questioning the lawfulness of it, not whether the president has the the power to appoint, but whether we have complied with the process." And so, he assured me that we have complied with the process to get the extension done and then also the process to have the confirmation um, also done. Um, sorry, Dr. Jagdeo, just one more question about the cash grants. Some persons would have expressed um, concerns about this cost. Seven men, including two who were previously charged, appeared in court today and were jointly charged with the abduction of 34-year-old Joshua Daly, who was snatched from outside a Main Street restaurant two weeks ago. The man has not been seen since. Appearing in court this morning to face the abduction charge were Wayne Barker, Davin Ty Mars, Aaron Allen, Dwayne Griffith, Damian Barlow, Alpha Poole, and Osafo Peters. The seven appeared before acting Chief Magistrate Faith McGusty. They were not required to enter a plea. However, while the prosecution objected to bail, the magistrate granted bail in the sum of $500,000 each. During the hearing, the prosecutor told the court that the police had received information that the victim was murdered and that searches are ongoing to locate the possible remains. The court was also told that there are a number of CCTV and other video recordings of the abduction that clearly identify the suspects. The acting chief magistrate reminded the prosecutor that the offense is a bailable one and since there is no body that has been found, bail would be granted to the accused on the abduction charge. The seven men are to report to the Brickton Police Station every Friday until the completion of the case. Family members of Joshua David continue to cry out for justice. During an appearance on the HGP Nightly News, his wife, his mother and his sister-in-law all pleaded for his, his return or for information to be provided about his whereabouts. Police investigators continue to follow a number of leads in the case. ...with the family of Joshua David called Brick 
who was abducted on September 26 after leaving the new thriving restaurant. I have with me Rashawn Wilson, who is his sister-in-law, sister Lisa David, who is his wife, and Pierre David, who is his mom. Uh, Rashawn Wilson, what new information are you hearing concerning the disappearance of Joshua David? Okay, as of today, we have no new information. That's why we're here. We want this pub the public to know that even if you're hearing something or you see something, we just want Joshua to return. Even if they did something to him, we, the family, we need him. It's been two weeks since his abduction, and his family is not at ease, he's not at risk. We need justice, even if something has happened to him. We need persons to start speaking out. Joshua was so loving. Right now, his mom, all other relatives, we're tormented by daily whatever's going on, and we're not pleased. We need Joshua at any cost, even if, you know, we're not pleased. And hearing nothing, that's what brought us here today. What has the police been saying to you? We're not, we, we weren't having any positive response from anyone. No one? No one. Um, Ms. Pierre, could you take me back to that day, what you were doing and what you heard on, on, on the evening of September 26th? The last half, I saw my son at 6 30, the 26th of September. I was home, I was on the bridge sitting and he leaving, sir. And he tell me hungry, he said, Joshua, look, you have a bite of all day, I sent fit. He said, put it inside in the barrel when I come. Be you coming back just now. And then the last, I see my son. And you got the news when? I tell the morning, like, Four o'clock. You got the news that he was abducted? Yeah, somebody come and wake me up. Come the and tell me, um, Maud's here, son get grab up. So I say, grab up. So I tell me, you know, start, you know, grab up. I say, I must see the police. See, grab you up with the car. You know, he's born in a little weed. You must catch with a little piece of weed or whatsoever. And, and that was it. I just saw Looking, staring at the guy, the guy staring at me, kind of like, he didn't know how to come and tell me. Anyhow, later down in the day, like, afternoon, like after 2 33, I go down to collect his car from Rob Street, take it home. So, when I reach here now, the same guy will leave with him to the restaurant. He was there. And a family member told to me, um, Peter, you have to go to Breakdown Station now. You're the same guy. So, the same guy riding me, carried me. And we go, I go to Breakdown Station, go up and I have to go and give a statement. That was the last, just go the last so like, time I see and mm -hmm. he wears about and thing. And that was it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to ask you finally. I know, it's, I, I know it's a distressing time for you, like I said before. What would you like to say to those who are responsible for your son's disappearance? I'd like them to get back my child. I need my child. He deserves this. He's not saying they kidnap him for, for um, whosoever do the thing. And they said he's friend. I don't know. There's, I don't know the person. is not my friend or whatsoever. do not mean because he must align me with them or move with them. He mean. The mean he and the the problem there with the guy is shoot out or whatsoever. My son who was home at the night already come in, come and watch a movie, hear he laugh and thing. And after he fall to sleep and you know, I don't know what to say. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Yes. What would you like to say to those who might be responsible for your husband's disappearance? As loud as you can, please. All I just want to say is that he really didn't deserve anything like this because I know the type of person, what I married, what I met, and he's never been in any trouble since I've been with him and we've been together for almost 10 years and I have never had a trouble, no incident or anything with him. All we're just asking for, whatever you guys did, just we just want closure. The most important thing, 
that's all we want is just closure as a family to just bring us him back to us. That's just we're, all we're asking for is you guys to just give him back to us because he didn't deserve this. Lisa, Rashawn, mm -hmm. what would you like to say to those who might have taken your brother? Well, as for Lisa said, same thing we want break, even if something bad has happened to him, we'd like for that. As of now, we're still hopeful that he's somewhere out there, you know, we still have hope that he's out there and we would like for them to return him even if something bad has happened to him you just return him we want to see you understand seeing and believing that he's not here anymore as what i would like the public to know that joshua he was a son, he was a son he was a husband he was a friend he was a brother he was a brother-in-law he was an uncle he was never a bad person and he didn't deserve any of this a man always confides in his sister. Did he ever tell you that his life was being threatened or anything of the sort? No. Do you know if he was part of any gang? No. You might be hearing that his disappearance uh, might be related to the Durban Street double homicide. Yeah. And that he might be related to uh, one of the guys who allegedly opened fire on a group of men and killed two of them. Yes. How do you respond to that? Well, during this, during that period of time, Joshua was at home. I don't know if he and this person is friend, but since I know this family, I've never heard or seen this Dominic. Okay, I've never. And on the night of that incident, I personally say that he was at home. I was the first person that got up that morning. When I got up, he got up after me. So I know for a fact that he was at home. Because he was in the house. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So whoever is, you know, trying to stay in him, it's not true. It's not nice because we all feel for our own. You understand? We feel for our own. Every cow, cow, every cow cries for their own calf. You don't deserve it. Do you think the police is doing enough to find The police need to do more. I really believe the police need to do more. Because the person that was with him that night, he's still walking the streets. Right. I was going to ask you about that. He was with a friend at New Thriving. Yeah. And is that friend reporting to the police? What are you hearing about this friend? This friend is walking free. Well, from last, the last hearing is that he's been reporting, but we won't be able to say if that's true. But he was with Joshua the night of the incident. He stood there, he did nothing, he contacted no one, and we want to know why he's out there because it's looking as though he knew something about it. So we want to know why he's still walking free, why he's not being questioned. Vice President Honorable Dr. Barrett Jagdio, Minister of Public Works Han, Bishop Juan Edgo, Minister within the Ministry of Public Works Han, Diada Indar, Minister within the Office of the Prime Minister with Responsibility for Public Affairs Han, Queen McCoy and Minister of Local Government and Regional Development Han, Sonia Parag are meeting with small contractors at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, who will be executing roadworks in Region 4. Minister Edgo announced that 947 lots of work is to be done with some six 673 contracts to be distributed. The government has allocated $11.5 billion for the upgrade of 947 community roads in Georgetown. In total, 673 contracts were awarded to small contractors to carry out the upgrades. The contracts were signed during a ceremony at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Friday. Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio highlighted the significance of these projects in the city, emphasizing that thousands of residents will reap the benefits. He described the initiative as an important opportunity for contractors to elevate their lives and grow within the industry. You have to sometimes take a chance with new contractors and nurture them along. Because we have such a vast amount of work to do and we have limited capacity in some areas, Jagdio said. The vice president further explained that while the government could have awarded larger contracts to a single contractor, it is important to expand opportunities to create a wider pool of contractors. So, whilst we are creating more opportunities for people, we expect if you get paid you will do a good piece of work, Dr. Jagdio urged, noting that poorly executed projects would not be tolerated. According to the vice president, since resuming office, the government has completed over 4,000 community roads across Guyana with this new initiative promising to continue that trend. 
Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edil, announced that the contract signings will continue in phases. The remaining contracts will be signed next week. The contracts are scheduled for completion by December, as stipulated in the agreements. Minister Edgar Warren, every man Jack, and every woman Jane has got to finish before December 50. The Auditor General's report for 2023 says $160.80 and was paid to the firm headed by Mikhail Rodriguez, known as Guyanese critic for the Bellevue Pump Station Works, but up to August 14, 2024, no works were in progress at the time of the visit of the auditors. The government, the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, and the Public Procurement Commission have been rebuked over this contract which went to Rodriguez Tepui Inc. which had never built a pump station before. Many reports have been carried in this newspaper over this award but the Ministry of Agriculture and the NDIA have been silent on the way forward for this project. The controversy has taken on political overtones as Rodriguez has ready access to Vice President Barad Jagdio and other senior members of the PPPC government. 8 Butterfly Sea Moss Powder Take your daily routine to the next level. Natural vegan superfood powder? Essential multivitamin powder made just for you. Mm -mm. Yeah, my a couple morning ago, critics come on the live. Oh, we found the culprit. We know who given, you know, it's called me smelly smell. We know who given smelly smell her information on this government. Could you believe the traitor? Is one of the own just because he wants to be president and this and the and critics come on the live. Y'all know it's Nandalal, they say. Giving me poor Nandalal. Anyway, y'all kill Nandalal. Me really kill. <laughs> Hello. Yes, is he. Nandalal, tell them is you give me the secrets. Yes, is yes, is Nandalal. Y'all, please. Said that the ranks of the Guyana police force are constantly being trained. But the government is Guyana is uncomfortable with the levels of crime and violence seen in the country. This is <laughs> Gail, that, that nicotine or whatever you're smoking, that can't be tobacco, man. That can be some real, real cheap weed. Got to be, got to be for you to be making these type of statements. And then hear what the Ananal is quoting the same quote. We are constantly training our police officers to make them better qualified and better suited to deal with crime and criminality in the country. More forensic approaches to investigate. I thought Mavis had tendered a resignation huh? from party and politics, but apparently that's not the case. Mavis May is on leave and receiving pay. Troy Fraser.